Hello and welcome back to another weekly update. Today we're going to talk about my progress in learning a new game engine, which I plan to use for my new Office Simulator game. We're also going to talk about how I plan to publish and share that game, and how I plan to share that publishing pipeline with others as Final Parsec's next product. If this is your first time here, thanks for joining. My name is Bear and Final Parsec is all about building tools and content to help others develop their own games. So I've shared in the past that I want to make an office simulation game as my next project. I have links in the description if you want to dive into like a design doc or more details about any of that. I've made the decision to try building this with Godot. We've built most of our games with Unity and even used Pygame as well in the past. Godot just wasn't around when we got started hacking on games over 10 years ago. Since then, its growth has been pretty incredible, and honestly, it's great to see how it's been adopted by indie game developers, hobbyists, and, and those participating in game jams. Is it on track to be an industry powerhouse that major publishers are using to ship AAA games? Probably not, at least in the short term, but it's those indies and, and hobbyist game developers that I care about anyway and I wanna meet them where they are. So this means building with approachable, understandable, and common tools like Godot. To get myself started this week, I just followed the tutorial from their documentation to produce my first 2D game. It was quick and easy, and I love the result. My initial focus as I spin up this new project is to build out a nice capability of finalparsec.com to host playable games, and then use that feature myself to publish the Office Simulator game. When you're looking at the list of games on the site now, I've added a section that shows your existing games and has a button to create a new game. You can attach assets to your game on an edit page to make it playable. Then your game has a public and shareable page where you or anyone else can go and play it. I'm also building and exposing an API so that you can programmatically create games without having to use the interface on the website. This is handy for interactions like our Unity plugin which allows you to deploy games straight from the game engine. It's my intent to make something similar for Godot games or any games which generically export to WebGL. This has never really been a well-documented or honestly all that robust of a feature of the site, and I'm hoping to elevate it to a more capable state. All users will also have a token generated now, which allows them to interact with our API. They can view and regenerate these tokens from the page they use to manage their account details. The token can be used like a digital key when you make calls to finalparsec.com. So if you use this token while attempting to publish a game, it will automatically be associated to your account. You can see this attribution on the game itself, and it will also be present on your profile page. It's my plan over the coming week to enhance the editing capability for games you've created. This will come in the form of updates to both the website and that API. I also intend to start documenting that API to make it easy to use and understand. I have the ultimate goal here over the back half of January to use these new features of the website to create a workflow where my Godot game has an automatic and repeatable deployment process as I start to iterate on it. If you've been around watching the channel for a while, you'll know I have the goal to create a new product and a new blog post each month. It's my intent to turn this game hosting feature into a product which is free to use for anyone up to a certain amount of storage. Once you reach a threshold, then I'll require you to purchase a premium plan to continue using it. This follows the same strategy that I've applied to the World Builder tool, and over time I'll try to add more differentiating features between the free and premium options. Speaking of the world builder, there's still a little bit going on there as well. Our world builder tool lets you track the people, places, and things as you develop the story for your next game. We've started some enhancements to allow for generating art using AI while you're using the artboard feature of the world builder. We think this is going to be helpful in letting you rapidly set the mood and figure out the look and feel for your world. We're also planning to make some updates to the dailies feature of the world builder. This gives you a daily writing prompt, encouraging you to practice your storytelling skills and we'll be introducing a street counter that lets you know how consistent you actually are. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to hear about any of these updates as they start to get released. We have new videos just like this every week 
sharing what we build. The last thing I want to share today is that our newest blog post was published yesterday. This one ties into the launch of that dailies feature on the World Builder and all of the usual setting of New Year's resolutions this time of year. I discuss how small steps, daily habits, and the courage to ship, even when your work isn't perfect, are the secret to successfully shipping your first game. There's a link to that article in the description below as well. I think that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'd encourage you to go visit our website, try out whatever feature interests you the most, and to leave a comment below about what you think. Just a reminder too that we do have a sale running on the World Builder tool for only the next two weeks. You can get 50% off if you use the code NEWWORLD at checkout before January 31st. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you next week. Bye.